Now this boss, punch a good old punch of Pedro. Also, not all that hard. Just gotta pay attention. I don't know why I'm even bothering to fight him. No way am I beating this guy without getting hit. But you just gotta pay attention. Oh, dang! When did I get some life back, man? When did that crap happen? And then I died. And you can't hit the start button until that little thing ticks down from 10 to 9. So I'm sitting here going, let me continue, man! Let me at him! Let me at him! Let me at him! Let me at him! Now that's the jump button. So, hook! Hook! He still hit me! You jerk! I got some lives now, man. I got some lives now, man. I can do this all day. The trick is to sit back. You bonk him if he does that. If he shoots up to you, you jump. Specifically onto him. And then he punches you. Right through the forehead. You gotta move forward a little bit to hit him in the forehead, though. If you just jump in place, you won't hit him. And then you still gotta be careful and pray. Cause that's how this crap works. Oh no, I died again! And then so did he. Boxing guy, what with your hair? Once again, did not get this translated, I don't think. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I don't think we did. I know we got the first guy translated. I annotated that one in. We got most of the ending translated, so I annotated that into the previous run. I don't think we got that translated, though. So that'd be kind of neat to see. That'd be something neat. That would be something that is indeed neat. Hey, buddy. Now, am I missing out on getting, like, fruit and things? Yeah, I'm getting, I'm missing out on fruit and things. But to be honest, at this point, a lot of the things are kind of hard to get, so I'm not worrying about too much. You want to, like, turn around there? Thank you. Now, you know, we started talking about math and stuff here last time. Ow, and stuff. hi -oh. We started talking about math and stuff, though. Now, I'd like to educate you guys. And I'd like to talk about more stuff. But the fact of the matter is... You can't just pull stuff out of your head to teach people about. I don't know, man. I could try to come up with something. What could I teach y'all about? I could teach y'all about something. I'm sure I could. Like getting an extra life for going all the way up there. Oh, yeah. And then getting hit by this guy's freaking tomahawk. That's like a cheap move right there. I don't know, man. I don't know. I have... I got nothing. I don't know what I could talk to you guys about. 
I can talk to you guys about something. 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 Nothing really quite has the cultural significance of the Pythagorean theorem, though. The, pa the Pythagorean theorem, though, interestingly enough, they say, well, it's named after Pythagoras of the Pythagoreans, which is a group of mathematicians in ancient Greece who worked under Pythagoras. This was where a lot of learning and stuff was done, but the fact of the matter is, Pythagoras didn't necessarily invent the Pythagorean theorem. One of the various Pythagoreans did. Now I'm gonna wait for you and see if you turn around or do whatnot. And then I'm gonna go up in here. And I said, I'm gonna go up in here. Thank you. I can make it, there we go. And then I'm gonna bonk you. And you's gonna die! And then I just gotta jump up there somehow. And like not get killed or something. That all do her. But yeah, um, the Pythagorean theorem in first came up with not necessarily by Pythagoras, but by one of his various followers referred to as the Pythagoreans. Because it was tradition, it was just how things were done. Could you like stop throwing your bloody thing at me? Yeah, a little fart ball. Where are you gonna land? Can I have some fruit? I'd like some fruit. Fruit's good. Fruit's tasty. Fruit like that fruit right there. And then I almost get hit by a freaking falling tomahawk from the sky. Yeah, Pythagoreans, they were around in uh, ancient Greece, though. That's kind of what they did. They learned themselves stuff. About math. And all kinds of fun stuff. Neat stuff. That was actually, um, just a hair before Plato's time. Plato? Now, Plato, he was an awesome dude. Plato was an awesome dude. Ah, you little jerk. Bump! In fact, some of Plato's dialogues were about, uh, about the Pythagoreans, if memory serves. I'm off to a glorious start there, gl gra what with the uh, grabbing onto the wall when I didn't mean to. And what with you guys up there heaving your stuff at me. You know what, I'm gonna teach you guys a little bit about Plato. Now Plato, Plato's a cool dude. Plato is a cool dude, and he doesn't afraid of nothing. I'm off to a glorious start, and I would like to just add that these little black-headed do dudes are like my least favorite enemies in all of everything. That they are. I don't like them. I don't like them at all. Hey, buddy! Now, Plato, Plato was a cool dude. He worked under Socrates, initially, while he was still in his learning stuff phase. And, so and uh, Plato was uh, one of these guys. There we go. Plato 
was one of these guys who helped in the early learning. He's the guy that made the... What's that thing that he made that's called something? Still got an extra life, so I can keep this up all day long. Oh, yeah. And then completely forget what I'm doing. Now, there's also the Socratic Dialogues, named after Socrates. Socrates used these extensively, but they were also named after... Or not named after, but they were also popularized by Plato. Now, Plato did a couple things for mathematics. The mathematical world. Now, one of the things that he did was he introduced the, or he popularized the Socratic Dialogues, which I mentioned. Now, the Socratic Dialogues, they're kind of, they're kind of like arguments, I guess you could say, but they're point-to-point -point arguments, where one guy says something, and then the other guy argues back. This is actually the very early form of proofs which proofs are a very fundamental thing in higher-end mathematics. Because you have to show that n minus 1 factorial over n factorial is equal to whatever the crap it happens to be equal to, which I forget because I just kind of spouted that off because it sounded familiar to, familiar to me or something. Now somebody, if somebody happens to be really smart and stuff, I'm not a mathematician. I'm a geometer, not a mathematician. And if I'm not mistaken, that line I just said, that was more, uh, statistics, I think. I forget. You can die. Thank you very much. Can I grab onto that? That'd be really neat if I could grab onto that, because there's probably stuff up there, and they're hidden, and I feel cheated. Crap. Hey, so it all works out in the end. So that's one thing Socrates or uh, Plato did was he introduced the um, very very early form of proofs, really, because you can show that um, this big formula happens to be true, but do you really know that it's true? I mean, how do you prove? that for every single number that ever existed, this one particular formula will work out as intended. You can't do it. Can't be done. So that's where proofs come in. Now, you hate proofs. I know you hate writing proofs. Very unpopular thing, this writing proofs is. And for the most part, that's because they're forcing you to write proofs for very simple things that everybody understands. It's like, I know this is true. Why do I have to write a proof to say this is true? Why do I have to write a proof that says all even numbers are a multiple of two? Why? And the fact is, you don't. That's a really simple thing, that is. In fact, it's taken for granted in later Hey, you know what? I can use the D-pad or the joystick for this. I was just wondering which one I wanted to use. I think I'm going to stick with the joystick. And I'm going to die here pretty soon. Probably. Probably. But, you got your stuff going. And then I died because I walked into him. Because I'm all smart-like. But Play-Doh, Play-Doh... Plato's a cool dude. Plato is one cool dude. Because he did that, he introduced... So, he introduced proofs, which I was talking a little bit about proofs. Let me say a couple more words on proofs. Proofs, very necessary in higher-end mathematics. Now, they introduced the concept to you later, early on. But, of course, they can't sh sit down and say... We expect you to prove this really big thing. 
They can't do it, because when they introduce proofs to you, you don't have a grasp of that higher-end mathematics yet. That's a lot of birds! And they can't really expect you to write a proof for this higher-end stuff when it works that way. And now this is actually kind of a fault of how math works in the education system right now. Which way did he fall? That's the way he fell. He dead yet? I think he's dead. God dang it, and you're flying tomahawk, man! I'm just trying to walk here! What's wrong with you, dude? We've got some cavemen here just trying to mind our own business. And then fall into the water, and game over. So yeah, proof's actually very necessary, especially when you start dealing with, like, freaking limits and derivatives. I mean, the whole idea of... the whole idea behind proofs, really, is that you can come up with some huge equation. Some huge equation. And then say something like, I can... I can tell you that for any variable, you plug into this equation, your answer will always be 5. Now that's a b pretty big claim if you got a huge equation. Like if you got an equation that's like x minus 1 factorial all over the quantity of 14x divided by 13 and all, maybe some exponents, take this whole thing to, like, the x minus 4 to the e power or something, and you can get... you got a huge equation for you right there. Fun times, man, fun times. And the whole point, then, is that I will tell you and say, this whole equation... this whole equation, no matter what variable you put in for x, this whole equation will always equal 2. Always! Guarantee it! So the question then is, how do you go about showing that this is true? I mean, you can tell somebody that, but how do you prove it's true? I mean, you sit down and say, well, if I plug a number in for it, I get 2. Well, okay. That means you proved it for one number. How do you know that works for all numbers? Okay, you plug in more numbers. You plug in two. You plug in four. Two works. Four works. Two works. Four works. Okay, how about three? Do you know if three works? Okay, we'll plug three in. Check. Yeah, three works. All right, so we know it works for two, three, and four. How about zero? Does zero work? Does 1.3 work? Does negative 14 work? Does 18 million work? I mean, there's an infinite number of numbers, man. So you can't, it can't be done. Can't be done. You just can't prove that it'll work. So this is where you get into proofs. This is where you get into some real elaborate crap to prove that indeed, for every single value of x, this is indeed true. And there's some real fun funky fr uh, proofs out there. There's some neat stuff out there. There's stuff out there like, oh, I don't know. You have to prove it for a base case. Prove it for a base case start off, to start off with. Do stuff like... I want to prove that this equation is always equal to 2 for all numbers greater than 0, or greater than or equal to 0. So, okay, so we start out with 0. Because it's all numbers greater than or equal to 0. So we start out with zero. Try that one out. That one work? We get two. Heck yeah! 
and one number. We got us a two. But now we have to prove that it works for every number above two. Now let's simplify this a little bit and say we're proving this for all integers greater than or equal to two. So that means it has to be true for zero, one, two, three, four, all the way up to infinity. So now what you do is you take your equation and you know that x works, or you know that zero works. You know your base case works. So now you'll do some neat stuff. Some real neat stuff, where you take, like, a variable and plug it in. We know that for at least one value, potential value of x, this whole equation works. So if we assume that it works for that value, then let's replace x with x plus 1. And then you prove with this x plus 1 that I can die because I wasn't standing close enough when I bonked him. Dang, there was an extra thing right there.